Good afternoon and welcome to today's Live Stalls TV class, Heat Press for Profit, How to Get Started with Heat Printing. I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls TV and I'm excited to show you what to look for in a heat press, the different choices that are out there in heat presses, and also um, some info about vinyl cutters and accessories and just getting started in your heat printing business. Heat printing is a very profitable uh, opportunity uh, way to decorate apparel. There are tons of different technology sets that flow through a heat press in order to decorate a garment. And so it's very important that you get things right from the start and that you invest in a quality heat press that does the right things that is going to really allow you uh, to grow your business and make as much money as possible with heat printing. Uh, this class is definitely a for-profit class, meaning we want to teach you how to make a business with heat printing, how to make a sound investment decision for a business. Uh, if you're still on the hobby level, this may be where you aspire to go with your business, but you may not start here if you're just looking to start something small, making sort of crafty items uh, for friends and family. I hope to show you the choices for a business, whether that's an at-home business or an actual uh, facility that will help you grow. As always, we're broadcasting live through GoToWebinar, so if you're watching through GoToWebinar, you can chat in your questions throughout. We have Joe that'll be working the cameras today and also the computer to channel those questions into me. And if you're joining us watching on Facebook Live, feel free to type your questions. I have a second monitor here to my left. Hi, Nikki from Atlanta. Um, I see you're on watching today. I can see all the questions on the live feed and I'll be able to answer those throughout. And so we have about 45 minutes together or however long it really takes and I hope to take as many questions as possible while making sure I hit all of the basic information. Um, I've been doing this since 2001. So I've been uh, working full time either in a sales or a management role uh, for a stalls company since 2001. So I've seen a lot of different heat printing businesses and a lot of different uh, apparel decorators. Some that have made poor choices on equipment and we've helped them out to get them into the right choice and others that say I want to start right from the beginning. So hopefully we can share um, some of those experiences with you today as well. So with that in mind, I'm just going to uh, turn behind me and sort of show you the lineup of heat presses that we have in the room here today. I'm going to be uh, talking through the Stalls Max heat press, which would be the entry level uh, Stalls heat press uh, to get in at a professional grade. I'm going to cover the Stalls Auto Clam line of heat presses and then also the Hotronics Fusion. Um, now there are steps above the Fusion, but if you're just getting started and you're a typical size business, not a commercial decorator that's growing from say uh, large scale embroidery or screen printing into heat printing, one of these three choices is probably going to be right for you uh, from the stalls lineup. Um, there are some additional resources that we'll post up after this session. There's a heat press buying guide um, that I worked with some folks here at Stalls in Writing um, that will help support um, some of the things we'll go over today that you can download and read or share out um, after the fact. So with that in mind, let's start with what's important to heat printing. Um, there's three big ingredients uh, to heat printing. They are time, temperature, and pressure. I would also encourage you if you have a notebook handy or you're in a place where you can jot down some notes, um, that's going to be important today as I go through uh, different things. I would probably uh, jot down important in heat printing, time, temperature, and pressure. Okay. If you miss one of those factors when you are applying a heat transfer to the garment, you are going to have a failed application. So it's very important that whatever heat press you buy majorly, uh, majorly, yeah, accurately measures time, temperature, and pressure. And so at the entry level, let's start with the Stalls Max because it hits um, all three of those a couple more accurate than the next, and that's why it's our entry level. So on this particular heat press, um, there is digital time and digital temperature. So there is a digital control screen uh, that we're zooming in to give you a look at. There's basically a plus and minus button and also a mode button. It's very simple. I can hit the middle button, which is the mode, and it will tell me sort of my set temperature, just like you'd set your oven. Hit the plus or minus keys to adjust that. And then I can hit the mode button again and adjust the timer up or down for the time of my application. Now this is your oven. The heat transfer that you receive is going to give you your recipe to set the oven for. And so just like when you pick up a frozen pizza, all the different brands vary. They tell you what to set the oven for. The transfer dictates what to set the heat press for. So in this case, uh, the first thing I'm going to apply is a screen printed transfer. It's going to apply at 340 degrees, which I have it set on, for 10 seconds. And so then the machine will accurately read out on the control board exactly 
uh, the temperature that the heat press is at. Now, we assume that's accurate, and it's important that when you buy a heat press, you, you find accuracy, you find one that, that is true and accurate, um, because really, um, this one from Stahls has a micro-wound coil throughout the top heater. The heat is delivered from the top and goes down onto your transfer. So you're going to get even temperature within a few degrees anywhere on this heating element. Now, there are inexpensive presses that sort of under the hood of the press or under the top platen, um, have a less expensive heating element. They cheap out and maybe there's a Z pattern uh, for the heating element or an X pattern. Basically what that does is it leaves uh, basically big variances in temperature, big cold spots on the top element. Naturally, um, that's a problem because you don't get your full 340 degrees on all areas of the transfer. That can cause durability issues. So it's very important time and temperature when you lock the press down the timer is going to engage, it's going to count down to zero, and it'll automatically beep when it's finished, alerting you to open the press. So the other things like the sound of the beeper, the ease of locking down, those are all considerations, but I'm going to focus on the really important things, and that's the accuracy of the machine. So uh, time and temperature is absolutely critical. I would highly recommend when you buy a heat press, if you can get digital time and temperature, that's going to be big because these digital machines actually read uh, typically with a RTD probe from the surface of the heater so you get that accuracy. If you have a machine with a bimetallic uh, thermometer or like a meat thermometer, there's going to be a little bit more of a variance in your transfer which is, could cause um, some issues uh, when you're applying, especially when you get into some technical materials. Okay, so time and temperature. All three of the machines we're going to look at today are going to measure time and temperature accurately. Pressure. Um, when I lock this machine down, it does not have a pressure readout. What it does have, have however, is a over center pressure adjustment. Pressure basically refers to uh, the amount of force that's being pressed down or exerted on top of the transfer um, to make it apply accurately. Every transfer will um, tell you how many PSI to apply, or they'll say a light, a medium, or a heavy pressure. All that adjustment happens right here. So you can turn this knob clockwise to lower the platen. That increases uh, the pressure. It's more difficult to lock down because the platen is in a lower position. Or I turn it counterclockwise to raise the platen, decreasing the pressure. So on the extremes, there's a light pressure. Turn it. Can't really lock it down without two hands. There is a heavy or a firm pressure. And so on this machine, it's all by how it feels. And people always say, well, I don't have a pressure readout on my machine. How do I know what's light, medium, heavy? There's a little bit of guesswork in that, but what I like to tell folks is that if it requires some leverage, depends on how strong you are, but some leverage, two hands, or some leverage with one hand to lock down, it's probably a firm pressure. Medium, you should be able to lock down on most presses with one hand, fairly easy. And light, usually I can lock down with two fingers. Um, it's barely making contact. So obviously there has to be a better way with which to measure pressure. And so uh, what Stalls has done over the years is we've um, innovated um, in the pressure readout. And so this is our entry level machine, so you will have to have the sort of um, hand measured or force measured uh, pressure with the arm. But if we go over here to the Hotronics line, this is going to be the uh, silver line of machines, you start to get some upgraded uh, feature sets. The time and the temperature are identical to the Stalls Max, but when I lock this one down, it actually has a pressure readout. Um, there is a digit here down in the bottom right of the control board, um, and this one's going to open and I'll just lock it down again so you can see. But when I lock this machine down, you can see right there it's reading out between a 6 and a 7. You see the red digit changing? That is the actual pressure that's being applied down to the platen that I have loaded. And so now when I adjust this over center knob counterclockwise here for you, uh, lightens it, lock it down, now it's a 4 rather than a 6 or a 7. So basically um, it's a gauge. 1 to 3 is a light pressure, 4 to 6 is a medium pressure, and 7 to 9 is a firm pressure. So now it takes a lot of the guesswork out of the equation and you can hit an accurate pressure. So at its most basic, that's time temperature and pressure. You should look for a heat press if you have the budget for it that measures all three of those components and you're going to have a better chance of getting accuracy in your print. At least the heat press 
will deliver accuracy if it accurately delivers time, temperature, or pressure. But then there's another element that happens with heat application, and that's the user or the operator. And that's where it, it's important that you understand the proper technique to make sure you're not screwing up the uh, temperature or really the pressure. The pressure is probably the biggest area, the biggest reason for failed applications in heat printing. So if you can get the pressure right, it's all good. And so what I mean is this, when I go to load a garment, t-shirt, whatever it may be, onto the press, a lot of people just sit it up on top of the press. Now that's an okay way to print. That will work, especially for a basic large t-shirt. Now you want to make sure your print area is flat, there's no wrinkles in it, and then you want to lock down your heat press to uh, get the application and the pressure readout. Now what happens is, in this case, if I have sort of the seam structure of the collar that's raised above the flat area of my shirt, uh, the pressure readout is going to happen from that seam area. That raised area of the garment is going to absorb the pressure, and so I get what's called a little bit of dropout, especially if I'm placing my transfer close to the seam. Um, that will show up a little more when you start to decorate items like bags or zip-up hoodies or shirts that have buttons like the one I'm wearing, um, all different types of items. If you have something on top of the print area that is higher, um, then, then the flat area of the shirt that you're looking to put a graphic on or a heat transfer on, you're going to have issues with the pressure readout, and that's a big reason for failed application. And so one of the ways we address this is through something we call threadability. Um, you won't find that in, that in Webster's Dictionary, but you will find it in the Stahl's Dictionary. Threadability basically is a word that means we are going to split that shirt and thread it onto the machine or load it what I call screen printing style, upside down onto the machine on the platen. So I split this open, I'm going to load it onto uh, the lower platen and I'm basically going to drape the edge of the collar off. Now I get a completely flat uh, printing surface uh, with which to apply the pressure and so I'm getting a true reading of the pressure on that zone. Now you may say if, you're, if you've heat printed uh, t-shirts and you already own a heat press, you know, I can do that on my press, I can just lay it off and drape the collar, and you can. But now when you really get into challenges is when you start to deal with youth garments, or you start to decorate team uniforms, or bags, or jackets. You start to widen what you want to print, you're going to have challenges if you don't have a threadable machine with interchangeable bases. That means this bottom platen, obviously if I take a youth t-shirt and try to load it on there, it's going to stretch and not work. So it's important not only to have the threadability, but it's important to have uh, the interchangeable bases. And what I mean is I'm going to unlock, there's a little lever on this machine as well as the uh, Max machine I showed you earlier that's going to allow the lifting off of attachments. If you've watched any amount of the videos that we do here at Stalls TV, you see us swapping out these attachments all the time uh, to print different types of items. Now, the reason you would want to do that is when you buy a heat press, you want to be able to print as many items as possible. So I always say it's sort of the, the deep and wide of how many items can I print. Um, the deep is I want to print items as quickly as possible and get through 50 shirts as quickly as possible with the speed and the efficiency of the machine. The wide is not only do I want to print t-shirts and sell them to that school, but I want with my heat press investments to be able to print as many items as possible that I can lay across the table and, and present in a sales opportunity. That's going to mean that you have more opportunity uh, to make a sales call. It's just not going to be about selling that t-shirt job. If they already have t-shirts, you're dead in the water. And it's also going to help you package and increase the average sale and really grow a heat printing business. So make sure your machine not only is accurate with time, temperature, and pressure, but make sure that it can load um, a wide variety of items to be able to uh, print those uh, to deliver sales opportunities. So before I get too far along, I'm going to go back over to the Max Press. I'm going to grab a screen printed transfer just to make sure we all understand the basics of heat printing and print um, an item. And so one of the other big things that I recommend, and Joe, if you can follow me over here, we're uh, going to keep you busy on the camera work today. I'm going to be all around the room. Um, when you're getting started in heat pressing for profit, um, start with the best heat press you can afford. 
Don't worry about the vinyl cutter right away. Don't worry about the print cut system or the other piece of equipment. Um, absolutely invest in the best, most accurate heat press you can afford. Because if you say, well, I have to have all of this stuff within a thousand dollar budget, and there's other equipment in that number, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a less than accurate, less than adequate heat press, and you're gonna find that those transfers you're applying may be falling off. The heat press may wear down uh, quicker. It may not have a long warranty. And so really you put your business name on the line. So I always say, get the best possible heat press you can and then find transfer providers because that's one of the cool things about heat printing. I mean, with a small area of table space, whether that's in a spare bedroom, uh, I happen to have my heat press on a stand in my garage next to the refrigerator, a very small area. Um, you can do a lot of stuff. And uh, Stalls Transfer Express is the most popular division of stalls that we have for people that are just getting started in heat printing because what they do is they focus on making you profitable with just your press. So what I have here, I visited there a couple weeks back. Um, I visited there many times, but a couple weeks back they gave me their latest uh, marketing kit. I left with it. Um, I think it actually has my name on the book inside here, but you open this up and when you buy a heat press from Transfer Express or from Stalls, you automatically uh, get this marketing kit. If you already own a heat press, you can buy this marketing kit for roughly $50 from Transfer Express. And it has a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, basically, this plugs you into a transfer supplier. So I get an idea book uh, with my business name on it. In this case, it's just my name, uh, but it would be your business name on it. Otherwise, um, this is going to give you a ton of different um, concepts and clip art and a quick application guide and a color selector of all the different uh, ink colors of transfers that are out there and available to you. It's also going to give you an apparel book. So Transfer Express carries a, their own line of blank apparel, literally thousands of pages here of blank apparel choices that you can order with your transfers when you purchase them. And then my favorite part of the whole thing is it gives you uh, a transfer guide. So it gives me concepts. All of these little images that you can kind of see here um, are the transfers that are included as samples. And so within this, there's, I don't know, 20, 30 or so transfers where I can do sample projects, actually create sales samples. And so what I've done is in advance, I've picked out a uh, transfer that I like because I wanted to explain the concept to you. So basically what we have here, and this is called the Transfer Express Marketing Kit, is we have a screen printed transfer onto this uh, sheet. This is actual screen printing ink on this sheet. You would uh, create your artwork on Transfer Express's website, and I'll show you that, um, or you would custom send them your customer's artwork, and they would print this for you, send you this in the quantity that you want ready to go. Now you'll notice I put a lot of different logos, or they put a lot of different logos on this sheet. I have my t-shirt graphic, I may have a graphic for a pair of shorts, I may have a graphic for a hat. So when you start to order transfers, maximize this sheet. As long as it's in the same colors that you're using, put other logos. Don't waste any real estate on this sheet. And that's called gang sheeting. And I'm going to trim this apart because I'm only looking uh, for the full front logo um, as a sample, but I can file these even and save them for later. And let's head over to this Max Press to uh, complete an application. Now I'm going to leverage all the techniques that I told you. So if you're just getting started with heat printing, uh, this Max Press varies by size as far as price points, but basically you're looking at anywhere from um, $800 to $1,100 for the machine. Um, I highly recommend you get a minimum of a 15 by 15 inch heat press, and that refers to the size of the heater. Um, optimally, if you can afford it, go with the 16 by 20 and you won't look back. That's the most popular size, that's what I have here. It's going to give you a larger print area. So I'm going to split my garment, thread it onto the machine. This particular transfer formula is called uh, Goof Proof and Transfer Express has a bunch of formulas you can learn, but Goof Proof is their most popular. Goof Proof means you can't mess it up. Uh, which is encouraging, especially if you're a newbie. I'm going to start with a preheat. This requires a medium to firm pressure. So I'm doing this by feel, changing my pressure knob and locking it down. I'm going to press this at 340 degrees for 10 seconds. If you've worked with Goof Proof before, you know it can also press at 365 uh, for four seconds, for three to five seconds. Position it into place. It is in a mirror image, so I want to make sure I have it 
uh, laid out properly, that it's not upside down, position it into place on my garment, and then apply. There is no need for a cover sheet when you're working with screen printed transfers. No need for an extra sheet over top. So we'll press that down and wait for it to complete 10 seconds here. Once it's complete, I peel the backing. Every transfer will come with a recipe that tells you how to peel that backing. It can be hot, it can be cold, it can be warm. Uh, what I just did there was a hot peel, and I'm going to flip this around so we can get a better look at it. Um, I peeled that backing hot, and so that gives me my uh, completed result. And so you release the backing hot, you have something that's on there. And so basically, this gives you, with just a heat press, with a quality heat press, you can screen print. Um, this is a screen printed finish, screen printing ink on the shirt. Um, I call it indirect screen printing because I finished it uh, with my heat press. So very quick, very easy, um, much cleaner, uh, much less expensive than investing in uh, screen printing. Let Transfer Express do it for you um, as you get started. And so that is by far my, my biggest uh, tip is start small, scale up. Sure, we sell equipment and I'd love nothing more than to sell you $10,000 worth of equipment. But the reality is we only make money when you're successful and when you're buying consumable product. Um, basically, if you buy that equipment and you run out of cash flow and you've overinvested and you go out of business in six or 12 months, that doesn't do any good for anybody, you or us. And so what we try to do is grow you into the business right. And it always makes sense to start with the best heat press you can afford and leave the transfer work to us. Now I'm going to go over to the computer. We'll bring up my computer screen here because I have Transfer Express's website up. So let's take a look at that. So basically we're looking here at uh, transferexpress.com and I am going to get to your questions. Um, I've launched their uh, design tool. You do have to have an account to launch their design tool. So it's as simple as uh, purchasing a marketing kit um, or doing something like that. And then all of those layouts that were in the idea book are here online. So what I can do is I can go to choose from idea book layouts. It will populate literally thousands of choices that are sorted by different categories. You can see some even um, sort of trendier ones like this um, Eclipse shirt um, that's looking forward to the Eclipse coming up here in four days. Um, so they sort of make stuff available. They had the uh, presidential uh, candidates available during the election so you can capitalize and they create this artwork for you. So you don't have to be an artist as well to use Transfer Express and get started. Let me just pick something simple here. Um, if we pick a design, it'll drop onto our screen. You can see that's my transfer sheet uh, represented. And every element of this design is customizable. So it starts you with a template or a concept, and then you can start to click around. Maybe this is for um, our local town here, Uniontown, can click OK, it'll update that. Uh, maybe it's not state, so I can select the state and just hit delete on my keyboard and get rid of that altogether. Um, could be for the high school, let's make it for the Raiders. So I can select that, click OK. Now I can do font changes here, um, it's very simple. I can go from a drop down, it'll tell me the fonts that are already in use in my design or I can use uh, any font from their library. I can do live sizing updates and move stuff around to get a better visual. Um, I can swap out clip art, click on swap. You can see all these are coded in your book. So if you sit down with the book at a Starbucks or something and you're going through the choices with your client, all you would have to do is type in the number um, to pull those up. Or you can go by category. So let's go for mascots. Um, you can select a design basically drop it onto the screen, size it accordingly, and sort of move everything around to create your design. So very, very cool, very easy to use. Um, of course, you can change colors. And once you start to populate your choices, and we have complete tutorials on this, um, it's going to update uh, pricing. So if I say I want this in goof proof, I'm applying it to a 50-50 t-shirt. And then we're going to need 36 of these it will say that's going to cost me $2.29 per transfer um, to order those. And so now I understand the transfer cost. If you make a color change, like if I would grab the mascot and change it from 
uh, let's say, uh, black to another color, which that doesn't look good, so let me pick another color. And then all of these uh, inks are available in the chip chart um, that are in your book. You make those colors, you can see now it's a two-color design, so it's $4 per image. So basically when you're working with Transfer Express, um, you're, you're paying, you're getting price breaks based on quantity, and you're also paying per color. So if you get a two-color design, it's going to cost you more than a one-color design because screens are being burnt um, in order to produce that because they're actually screen printing onto that transfer um, sheet. And so I'm going to take a, a couple questions here um, that are coming in here. So I see Rhonda's asking, Goofproof, you pressed it for 10 seconds, did something change? Um, Goofproof has an alternate application at 340 degrees for 10 seconds. So if you don't want to run your heat press up at 365 for the three to five seconds, you can drop it down. So there are some flexibility um, in transfer applications. Just consult with the manufacturer. Uh, Robert says, what is the best company to buy t-shirts from? Um, as I mentioned earlier, Transfer Express has a line. There are a ton of choices. Uh, Sanmar is a great supplier that we use a lot here for basic t-shirts. It stalls TV that has a lot of distribution locations. Um, if you're looking for something uh, fashion forward, there's companies like Pennant Sportswear, uh, Bella Canvas. Um, there is a whole bunch of choices on stallstv.com. If you click on the resources tab, you can actually uh, download for free uh, a blank apparel wholesale guide that will help you uh, see um, some different companies. Um, you can get transfers in one color designs from Transfer Express. We just went over that, so no problem. Um, if you didn't receive a Transfer Express marketing kit, but you did buy a heat press from Stalls or Transfer Express, just reach back out to our customer service teams and they'll do um, their best to look up that order and make sure that they get you um, on board with a marketing kit. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Teflon sheet, craft paper, there's some people uh, responding to each other and answering questions, so I think we're caught up to speed here. So uh, That covers sort of uh, Transfer Express. So when you're looking for a heat press, um, get one that's as accurate as possible, get the most you can afford. And so, so far, if we walk back over here, um, we took a look at the Stalls Max heat press, which is a great choice. If you're on a sort of starter budget, you should plan to spend somewhere around $1,200 for the 16 by 20 once you start to add in some accessories. Or the Hotronics Auto Open Clam, you jump up to about $1,500, $1,600 for the 16 by 20. Um, to really get that threadability on these two machines, you're going to need an extra piece. And so we have that max press mounted on a counter stand. So you may have noticed that already. Um, this press is designed to sit flat on the table. But to get that threadability where I'm splitting that shirt on, you need to raise it up and make it a cantilever-like uh, design. And so there's two ways to do that. There is the uh, counter caddy, C-A-D-D-I-E, that we call it, that raises it up uh, within your counter space. And then there is the standard heat press caddy, which is our freestanding uh, stand that allows you to drop the heat press right on, also has some wheels that can be moved around and raised up and down for your height. So those are two great choices to make your stall's clamshell press threadable so you can split it and load items on. Uh, ballpark number is the counter caddy, is about 200 bucks uh, to add on, and the freestanding one is just over 300. Um, I'm quoting ballpark numbers. Make sure you go to stalls.com or transferexpress.com to get the specific uh, pricing and deals. Um, or if you decide you want one of these, just type in and we'll have somebody reach out to you to get you all squared away. Once you, um, those are the clamshell options, meaning that operate within their own footprint like a clam. Um, I personally own this one. However, my favorite machine is the Hotronics Fusion that I'm going to get to. The reason I own this one um, is because I have a space constraint. That machine needed to fit against the wall in my garage and it needed to open within its own footprint and I couldn't afford to swing it away, uh, basically taking up a lot of space and running into the wall. Um, so I needed that uh, about the machine. Also, I bought the AutoClam because I wanted the digital pressure. I also wanted the automatic uh, portion of it, which was basically when the time is expired, it automatically opens. So I'll drop the normal size platen back on here, lock it into place. When you lock that down, not only does it have the digital pressure readout, but it's going to count down for you. Once it hits zero, it'll give you the couple beeps here on its way down to zero so you know it's about to open. 
and then it will automatically open. That was really convenient for me because what I like to do is I have a tray beside me on both sides of me when I'm heat pressing and while it's pressing I like to work on grabbing my next transfer, double checking the size of my t-shirt and getting it ready uh, to pull over or folding my last shirt uh, that just came off the press. Okay, And so that allows me to sort of multitask even with one person at a press. Of course, if you're printing at events, if you plan to do that, um, if you're printing inside of a retail store, this is really nice so I can turn around and help a customer and not have to worry about scorching the shirt or the press staying locked down or continuing to beep and ruin uh, the garment. Okay, so those are the clamshell style presses. Then we jump up to the Hotronics Fusion. A um, couple big reasons why I like this as the main machine. It definitely jumps up in price point, so you start with a whole package, get around the $2,500 mark. Um, but what you have here is you have the option for a heat-free workspace. So it swings completely away um, as long as you have room for the machine or it draws completely out. And what that allows you to do is do all your layout without the heat over top of you. So it's a lot cooler to operate this machine. It's also more energy efficient because the heater stores over top of the plant and you don't lose as much heat uh, for it hanging up in the air. Um, also, I can see directly over my transfer. So when I'm lining something up, I can put my head over top, make sure everything's centered, and that's a big difference from the clamshell where I kind of have to get in here. I can't get directly over top of it. So that's a, a big difference for me uh, as well. Now, I've talked about threadability, but when you start to talk about printing that wide variety of items, it's, it's more than just threadability. It's what can I load on the machine? So I say loadability. And so this one has the interchangeable attachments as well that swap out. And I want to compare something for you. Take this one back off. So on this machine, you can see that it has, on the clam, it has the whole footprint um, of the machine. Basically, there's a wide space here. So if I wanted to print like a, a sleeve or a leg or a small tight uh, pocket area, that's going to be uh, tougher to do on this machine. So uh, we sell interchangeable platens, and I'm going to drop one onto this machine. This one's our 4x4 four four inch attachment. Now remember, it's important to be able to print with these because it's going to actually uh, raise up that print area to hit that tight print location. So I'm going to cross over for one second. And if I have something like this bag with this print zone, it's very difficult to load here because I can't split that pocket over this footprint. Now sure, I can split the whole thing and lay it in there in this particular style, but you really want to isolate this print area and get it flat if at all possible. So if I take this 4x4 platen and drop it onto my fusion press, lock it into place, you can see it's much more narrow in this cantilever design. So now I can take that same item, and it's sort of tough to operate when it's in the draw phase, but I can split that print zone and get it on top of the machine, basically getting that area flat. And so that's a big difference. I can hit smaller sort of pockets and items on this press. Also, if you want to do full long sleeves and legs, think about this. There is an attachment for sleeves and legs. And so I'll drop this on to this machine. And when I grab a shirt such as, let's see, this one's easier to get for me. When I grab a shirt such as this, now I can split this open and thread it on because there's enough space under the machine to get to the sleeve print location. I would never be able to split that sleeve onto this uh, clamshell uh, design. So that's a big difference. Um, the other thing that I want to mention um, with the long sleeves and legs, this gives me the full 6 by 20 uh, print area on the Fusion Press. So um, tighter print zones, better threadability, that's a big difference on this press. Now we may have made some advancements for the clamshell for sleeves and legs that I'm going to show you here in a moment, uh, but it's nowhere near as versatile for printing a wide variety of items as the Fusion. So, excuse me, that's one big difference. 
The other big reason, other than the um, being able to see over the print zone, the reason I like the Fusion is it has a full uh, digital display touchscreen control board. So I can actually save presets, I can instantly pull them up, um, I don't have to change uh, for every particular setting. So that's a big deal to me because uh, I can load in the common 20 transfer types that I use or whatever that may be. All right, let's stop and take some questions. And I got two hot heat presses, so I am breaking a sweat here today. All right, do we have anything coming in through GoToWebinar, Joe? Yes, uh, what kind of maintenance would a heat press need and how often would that be required? Good, so uh, good question. How uh, much maintenance would a heat press need? Basically, it's keep the platen clean. Um, so the actual top uh, printing service, uh, surface, the nice thing is uh, if it's Teflon coated, meaning it's, it's typically black rather than silver on the press, all of the stalls machines have that non-stick coating to it. It can easily be wiped down with a, um, like a non-abrasive industrial hand cleaner like Gojo or, or something from Home Depot or Lowe's that's readily available. Um, honestly, I haven't even used that on my press at home and I've owned it for four years. I usually just try to keep up with it and wipe it down while it's warm uh, with a damp paper towel or rag. Um, as long as you're not pressing a transfer upside down, you should be, it should be pretty easy uh, cleaning. Um, keep that clean every once in a while as it ages. You may need um, to put a little bit more grease on the pressure adjustment, um, but Hotronics has uh, a 1-800 line, 24-7 support. So if you're ever having something with the press that that's, doesn't seem right or tough to do, you call them and they'll walk you through how to fix it. The, Silver presses, the Autoclam and the Fusion, have five-year warranties, which is best in industry by far. Uh, the Max Press, the black one, has a one-year warranty, which is still quality for an entry-level uh, machine. So other than keeping the platen clean, I'd really say um, no maintenance. Maybe 10 years down the road, literally tens of thousands of applications, you may have to swap out the shocks um, on this one, which is about a $30, $40 replacement. Going back to when you were talking about the threadability, uh, the question is so you don't have to use pillows, you, you should just load directly onto the platen then. Okay. Um, are you mic'd up? Are they hearing you read the question? Okay, I just wanted to confirm. So uh, as far as using pillows with threadability, you really don't need pillows if you have the proper platen. Um, I always prefer that way. However, if you don't have threadability, pillows are a nice tool. And so let me grab one here. We have uh, just two different samples I grabbed. There's a lot of different pillows. I want to make sure everybody knows what we're talking about here. Um, these are coated with a non-stick material, sort of wrapped and sewn around them. They come in a lot of different sizes. So we just loaded this uh, sleeve over here on the Fusion to print. If I had an auto clam and I couldn't do the full zone or sleeve, which is what I have at home, I keep one of these in my garage. And what I have to do is um, if I want to hit a sleeve location, more common for me is I'll decorate like a yoga pant or a capri pant for dance, I actually slide the pillow in. So I'm holding the pillow, I slide it into the sleeve, now I'm going to lay that whole heat press zone on top. Once again, it's isolating the print area, getting it flat uh, for printing. Pillows are good for a lot of applications. The challenge with a pillow is you can't truly achieve a firm pressure on the pillow. So Transfer Express actually says do not use pillows with screen printed transfers. If you're using heat transfer films or some other types of applications that are a medium or a low pressure, pillows are a great choice, but the platens are going to give you the best overall solution for the most variety of products accurately. Um, I tend to talk a lot. I'm good at that. So one more thing on pillows is sometimes even with a machine that's threadable with the right platens, you'll still need a pillow, and that's when you can't get rid of the seam. So a great example of that is if you're going um, across the front of, say, a split front jersey. You put that pillow in there so those seams sink down into the pillow and even out your pressure. So there's even another use for pillows than just getting the area flat. It's absorbing seams to get a nice, even pressure. All right. From a business standpoint, this will be the last one before we move along then, uh, should you purchase using cash versus credit when starting up, especially when we're talking about items such as heat presses? Um, cash versus credit, you know, I'm, uh, I consider myself a business advisor in some senses, but I would um, probably um, defer to um, an accountant um, on the best, because I think it's going to be different um, for every person. Um, so I would probably defer on that question. In my case, I did it on a cash back credit card. 
because uh, I wanted to get the points uh, for it on a business card and opened up an account there. So I think to each his own there. Um, I don't really think there's a benefit. I definitely wouldn't get into a high interest rate um, loan on a heat press. They're pretty affordable. Um, if you're at the $500 mark, wait, okay? Save up, get, get a good press the first time. Uh, you'll be in business longer and be happy with that investment. Okay, we're good on questions there. Just looking down through. Um, Rhonda says, I have an older Max Press with three extra platens, but not the quick change. They would not work with the new press, correct? So if you have an older style heat press, um, it's important to just make sure that Hotronics knows the model of press. And so Joe's showing me a platen over here I'm going to grab from him. This would be the post casting mount on yours versus this one. So Hotronics makes all these platens. They're available in the exact same sizes. You just need to make sure they know your style of presses so they can put the proper mounting bracket uh, to fit your machine. Moving forward for the last few years, um, they've all had this pin registration, so they're fully interchangeable. Um, if you ha own these already, uh, you can always buy the pin registration system if you upgrade to a new uh, quick change press. Um, did you say the AutoClam has a digital pressure setup? Uh, Salima asks, absolutely. The AutoClam does have digital pressure. Um, how can I prevent a print outline from being on a hat, not a, sc not a scorch, but just an outline? I believe that's a question from Denise. And so uh, when we start to talk about hat presses, it's sort of a good seg segue. Let's just head over there now. Um, once you make your flat press investment, um, a hat press in, in the world of heat presses is usually the, the next best add-on uh, machine when it comes to actual machinery. And you can see here it's a special curved uh, mandrel that, that's loaded, a special curved platen that drops in. And so one of the biggest issues with hat presses, and I've done a uh, complete video on this, actually a Stalls TV morning show on getting rid of the crease marks on hats and how to do it. It's probably too detailed to go in depth here, but the short answer is make sure you have the proper platen. This is a standard platen. If I were to load this low profile cap on this standard platen and try to lock it down, what I would have is a lot of puckering um, on the front crown area of that cap. And so what you need to make sure you have is a hat press with an interchangeable platen because there is a smaller attachment, in this case a uh, two and three quarter by six and a half inch, that's going to make better contact with that front panel of the hat uh, to be able to print it. Some other quick tips, that's nice good contact. Some other quick tips um, to get rid of that crease mark is pick a transfer that applies at a lower temperature and also a lower pressure that'll mitigate the risk of leaving a crease mark and then also know your cap. If you're decorating a cap that has a, a soft crown style it's going to be a lot easier uh, to work with like the one I have here. If you're decorating one that's more of a um, a fused buckram it's called, or a um, sort of a hard crown style, um, that's more likely to crease. Also stay away from acrylic if you can and go to a, a twill based uh, cap if you're talking about the fitted uh, 5950 new era sort of styles of caps. Um, so we, I can offer some more suggestions and a link to that video once I get to the computer. That'll help you. All right, Salima's so ready to buy now. Awesome, we'll reach out to you and get you set up. Anything else happening here? Oh, if you're in the $500 range for a press, Imprintables Warehouse may have you covered with the Red Press, a very good economy press. So yeah, Imprintables Warehouse is a stalls company. Uh, that Red Press um, is an economy press. Um, good machine, not gonna give you threadability, um, not gonna give you the longevity, but if you're looking for a good um, starter unit, um, that would be a way to go. If you're, what, I, what I always tell people is take the cost of the machine and divide it by the number of warranty years and, and figure out the cost to own per year. So if I take something like this machine, uh, the AutoClam at $1,500, I divide that by five warranty years, it's gonna cost me about $300 a year uh, to own that press because they're basically maintenance free and don't require much upkeep. So in order to cover um, $300 a year, Basically, I break that down. I'm talking, um, what do I need to do? Have about $30 ballpark in profit a month. That's three shirts uh, if you're making $10 in profit per shirt. So you don't have to do a whole lot to justify an investment in a good press. So I would say, save your money, invest in a good one. I know you'll make it back um, as, as long as you can sell and market um, products. Okay. 
What is the best place to order product if we need two, three color images? Uh, Marlene asks, so Transfer Express is great for two or three color, but it, it definitely depends on quantity. So screen printed transfer is one style of transfer. The, as you start to go up in color count, screen printing becomes expensive and you'll want to look at a digital transfer, typically produced off of a print cut machine. And so at stalls, we would call that our CAD prints transfer, uh, a digital transfer. And so learning the transfer lingo is going to be a big part of getting started after you get your press. So once you have the Transfer Express marketing kit, you'll be good to go for basically one, two, three color work at mid to large quantities, so 36 pieces or more. That makes sense. If I'm going to do low quantity special effects or high color count, then stalls is going to be a good solution. And so you can visit stalls.com to learn more. Um, and, and let me go over to that website actually, and I want to show you some of it. If you go to the website, um, all you need to do is set up an account. There's a couple different products that are important for a heat press only owner. They would be under like your custom logo services. So under custom logo services, these digital transfers or logos, if you have three plus color images, you'll see a whole selection of transfer types that are for full color transfers depending on what you want to decorate. And so you can actually go through the process to upload your artwork to stalls um, and we'll come back to you with a quote and you can select your transfer type and that's good for like high color count art um, like some of the stuff you're seeing here. Now heat transfer vinyl is also another rapid growing area of something that can run through your heat press and so at stalls we can cut the heat transfer vinyl for you. Um, the easiest way I know to order it is called CAD cut templates so I just go to letters numbers and designs and click on CAD cut templates and that basically I can launch a designer. Take a second to launch. This looks much like the EasyView designer because our in-house development team called CADWorks Live powers both of them. Um, basically you can pick the same layout, uh, pick a layout you want. See the artwork's a little different because we have to cut and weed this with a, a vinyl cutter and by hand with the weeding, but I can make all the same changes. So if I wanted to do that same Uniontown, Raiders, you can do that. I can also swap the clip art. So we have it grouped in much the same way. If I want to go to mascots, I can scroll down through. I can grab the options that are available, swap those in, move it around live on the screen. Um, this is good for your lower quantity stuff. Also your special effects. CAD cut materials, another name or trademark name for heat transfer vinyl, I can pick glitter. So with your heat press now, if you have the right heat press, you can do so many things with just your heat press. I can get glitter transfers cut. Um, let's say I wanted uh, 12 of these. It'll automatically populate and tell me it's going to cost $871 per design for 12 because um, it's a special effect. Now you can uh, select this and pricing will change if I size it down slightly. Let's say it's for a uh, youth t-shirt and it's 9 by 8, it's going to cost me $6.27 per piece. So all the pricing is live. You pick your material selection, add to cart, and check out. You receive these fully cut and fully weeded. Um, weeded weeding basically is the process of remo removing the excess glitter uh, away from the design. So if you decided you want to buy a vinyl cutter and cut designs yourself, you're also going to have to plan time for all of the weeding. Anybody that's cutting stuff right now knows you have to uh, weed a lot and the more intricate your artwork is, the longer it takes to weed the design or prepare it for application. Now, I'm a big proponent of vinyl cutters. Actually, uh, the majority of my career here at Stalls has been focused around uh, making people successful with a vinyl cutter and our roles of heat transfer film. Having said that, a, uh, that process isn't optimal for everybody. For instance, if I get an order in my business for 200 shirts and I'm doing this part time, the last thing I want to do is go home when I want to spend time with my family and be weeding 200 designs to prepare for application. Also, if I have a, a spike or a one time uh, big order, or maybe I don't want to manage staff and have employees set up to weed and prepare designs, I can let stalls do all the cutting for me 
all I have to do is heat press. So it's a great option if you're really doing this for profit and for business-like clients, whether that's businesses, teams, etc., not just one-off uh, quantities, to let stalls uh, take some of that work off your plate. And so that designer's called CAD Cut Templates. But um, having said that, um, I do own a vinyl cutter as well, and I would recommend a vinyl cutter investment sort of as the next step of your business. But you do need to have some ability to do some artwork in order to make the most of a vinyl cutter. So preferably a vector art program such as Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator would be good. Um, some cutters come with their own design programs like the, the small format little 12 inch cutters you can get locally often have their own design program. Uh, at Stalls we offer a program called CAD Works Live. That's uh, C-A-D-W-O-R-X Live com that you can design on for free to output for some cutters. But a cutter, uh, basically what it does is it cuts vector graphics. So I'm actually going to take a moment to launch CADWorks here um, to design something and show you how a cutter works just to make sure we all understand the process. So let me didn't pull this website up in advance. I'll pull that up now. And while I'm logging in here, Joe, are there any questions coming in? There's a question asking about whether you're not going to do whether or not you'll be doing some uh, vinyl, and the answer, of course, is obviously yes. We're we're at that point now, uh, but they want to know if it's available through Transfer Express or would they use a stall uh, a different stalls company for that? For the um, you ha so two accounts basically, we're asking you to set up. You're going to set up one at TransferExpress.com. That's going to give you your screen printed transfer supplier and then set up one at stalls.com. That's going to give you anything cut from heat transfer vinyl in films as well as your digital transfer. So the different it, difference is we're printing and cutting at stalls. Transfer Express is screen printing. So two different uh, transfer technologies to get your designs. Okay, so CAD works live. You log in. Um, this is going to be our free software for vinyl cutting. Um, it's its own program. You register for free. It's free to stalls customers. I'm going to go to launch the designer. You can go to uh, add text, basically build from templates. It's all the same thing. I'm not going to give you a full tutorial here, but I want to show you um, some concepts. So I'll just pull up my files here for a second. Take a second to load with the internet connection. Let's pick one and open it up and see if it populates onto the screen here. Take a second to render here. So CADWorks is a web-based design program. Uh, basically, you log on through your internet browser, whether that's uh, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, whatever that may be. And you're going to design and save your designs um, out in the cloud. And so um, this is under my login, so I've saved these designs um, under my login in the cloud. Basically, once I'm happy with those designs and I've customized them for the group that I want, I'm able to download them to a cutter driver that's going to send uh, to a vinyl cutter. And so I'm going to delete some of this because I don't want to cut all of these uh, designs, which were layouts for a variety of shirts. Let me size this one appropriately. 11 inches by 3 is fine. Um, I'm going to put it into a wireframe view. And so you can see, this is what the cutter sees. It has no idea what color um, the design is. It only sees the vector cut lines. And so what you're going to do is I'm going to uh, create the artwork, basically send it out to uh, Vector Cut, which is a free uh, driver um, that we give you for a variety of vinyl cutters. And then I will be able to output uh, from there. And so I'll zoom in this downloaded to my local machine. Um, at this point, you can mirror the design because if you're cutting with heat transfer vinyl, you want to cut in the mirror image, and then I'm going to send it over uh, to the cutter. And so it looks like we're getting uh, some good feedback on CADWorks. We appreciate that. Before I actually send to the cutter um, and show you the process, I want to talk a bit about uh, vinyl cutter choices and what to look for because that's a part of today's class. Um, I apologize. I am well over the allotted 45 minutes. Um, but hopefully you're finding uh, value in this and we'll uh, keep going until we complete here. So the, when you look at a vinyl cutter, much like a heat press, I would say get 
the biggest you can afford. If you're going to decorate apparel graphics specifically for heat printing, 24 inches is as much as you need. You don't need to go crazy unless you're going to do some wide format signage. So I always recommend a 24 inch cutter. That's going to give you the greatest access to different material choices because a lot of materials come 20 inches wide and it's also going to allow you to maximize um, that material and not have a lot of waste. Um, every square inch of material which comes in a roll to be loaded into the vinyl cutter is cost. So if you throw a strip of this in the garbage because you're trimming it down to fit on your cutting mat, that's going to be about a penny a square inch for basic film going into the garbage so it adds up. So 24 inch cutter is what I recommend um, if you're really doing this for business and for profit. You can get by with a 12 inch cutter for some small scrap stuff, something like a Silhouette, a Cricut, a Brother Scan and Cut. Those are all great machines if you're just getting started and just want something for little quick turn stuff. But once you make a business out of it, look for a 24 inch roll fed cutter. Um, my preference, and uh, this is my opinion, is the GraphTech is the best in the 24 inch cutter uh, format period. Um, Roland is a great brand as well. I believe it's a close second. You can't go wrong with either choice if you've bought them. There are some other brands that are very good, but I always like to look at a cutter that's going to give me the best range of what I can cut and also the longest uh, feeding length so I can do it unattended. Uh, the GraphTech does that. So um, the GraphTech I have behind here, we're gonna get you a close up view of this machine. Um, you can see this is a, a full 24 inch cutting bed. Basically what you're gonna do is I'm gonna drop the material onto the roll holder in the back and feed it through. I'm sliding the roll because the machine is going to lock down on the edges of the material with these pinch rollers. On a 24 inch cutter, these rollers are adjustable um, to lock down on even scrap pieces of material. And then I'm going to load it down and say go ahead and find the front edge. Now there's a couple reasons, big reasons, why I like the GraphTech. Number one is it has a servo motor. Um, basically this is a strong motor. And what that is going to do for you, number one, it won't sound like a um, spaceship when it's cutting with the, the loud noises, but more important to that, the material handling is excellent. It holds the material flat while it's cutting it. So when you start to cut very thin materials or very thick materials, sometimes you might notice the materials puckering on your uh, cutter when you cut it. If you have another 24 inch unit that has a stepper motor, you're not gonna get that. This has a powerful fan because of that motor that blows down, sucks the material flat, and holds it flat. I don't need any extra pinch rollers to try to compensate. This is good on material handling and it's going to hold it flat. So ser servo motor for business cutting um, is essential in my opinion. Next, I like that this has an expanded cutting field. And so most cutters can only cut in between the pinch rollers, and so you lose about an inch of material on each side. This cutter can be set to an expanded cutting field where it can cut in front of the rollers. That saves you some material. Sometimes it also allows you to get that extra design across the material for better nesting. So expanding cutting field is a big uh, difference versus a lot of cutters in its class. Um, next is accurate tracking. So the idea that you can feed material through on this for a very long distance without it going off track. Most cutters will only do about 10 feet. This, I've just fed that entire five yard roll to the ground and now I'm going to retract. I know it's tough to see at this angle, but the material hit the ground and now I'm retracting it. It's never sliding out from under the pinch roller. I always recommend you pre-feed the length of your job anyways. Um, because that will ensure it's gonna track straight and not go off track. What I do is I'll send the job to cut and then I'll go back in the living room, watch the Steeler game when they're on and check it when, at the next commercial break. Cause I do this um, just on the weekends and in the evenings. Um, the other thing, in addition to the longer length tracking more accurately in the expanding cutting field, then we get down to the specifics on how it cuts. So all of these, a lot of cutters cut with a knife technology and that's not a big deal. Um, basically there's a blade that's going to cut that fits right in the tip here. Uh, most people put their blade out too far. You barely want it extended about, um, really it's the thickness of the material you're cutting, but a half a credit card's thickness is a good starting point that I always recommend. And it drops down. And so basically the machine um, drags the blade over the material to complete the cut. It's called drag knife uh, cutting. And what happens on a lot of cutters is when it's dragging that knife and it hits a 90 degree angle, sometimes you just get this little skip. 
that doesn't show up on sort of run-of-the-mill basic material, but when you go to a thin material like fashion film or like premium plus that's super stretchy, these premium materials that are a better quality on the garment, sometimes you'll get a little bit of skipping um, on those corners. And, and, and really what you want to do is you want to enable overcut. So this machine you can actually enable overcut. So what it'll do is it will cut those corners a little bit over the 90 degree edge. So rather than just doing this, it does this. Okay, And so it extends each way. And that eliminates the skipping and gives you a cleaner cut. What does that mean? Easier weeding, more accuracy, less waste. So overcut is essential for thin, stretchy materials or extremely thick materials because this cutter is also capable of cutting not only glitter materials but tackle twill for applique. So if you're an embroiderer, you definitely want to have a professional machine with a servo motor and overcut. The other big thing um, that I want to mention with overcut is these machines often do the rhinestone templating. We don't show it a lot here at Stalls TV, but it'll cut the sticky flock material or the sandblast mask cut the little circle patterns to brush your rhinestones in. Overcut's important for that. So that circle doesn't have a little skip and make it impossible uh, to weed. And then last but not least is something that's a big word. It's called tangential emulation. Basically, uh, instead of drag knife cutting, there is a cutter technology out there that's called tangential cutting. And what that means is at that corner, the blade picks up rotates in its carriage and starts the other direction. And by doing that, it helps to eliminate that skipping as well. But with tangential emulation, basically it emulates tangential cutting. It's not actually going to turn the blade within the blade holder in the carriage, but on the corners when I enable that, it'll lift the blade momentarily, set it back down so the drag knife blade can sort of reorientate itself and start the other direction without skipping. So all in all, Phenomenal cutter. I wouldn't recommend any other one for top quality at 24 inch. Once you have your material loaded, uh, instead of time, temperature, and pressure like a heat press, this basically does speed and uh, force. Um, I'm going to do a test cut. We recommend forces for all of our different materials that we manufacture. I'm going to hit the test button here. Tell it, give me a test cut. And test cut. Press enter. And then I'm looking to weed away this little square and leave the triangle behind. Heat transfer vinyl is a two-ply film. Adhesive is up and then it's backed with a carrier. I want to cut through the film and adhesive but not through the carrier so my design stays laid out pre-spaced so I can flip it and apply it. Got a nice accurate text cut. So let's go back to where I want it to start cutting. Move it to the side of that test cut a little bit and set my point of origin. Now we're ready to send this job over to the cutter so you can watch it cut while I answer any questions that are coming up. Um, do you need some type of material for cutting twill material? Um, so there's a couple options on twill material, Ken. Some material, like our pressure sensitive twill, already comes with its own packing that you can just load it into the machine. Uh, the twill side is face up, so you just cut it in the positive. But if you're buying just like a loose twill material, like our poly twill, uh, you can use a cutting mat. And so a cutting mat is very common to craft cutter owners. Um, typically it's just a sticky mat that allows you to place a fabric like a twill down onto, load it into the machine. Um, that way it has sort of a backer to feed through there. Cutting mats are also tremendous for doing scraps that are smaller than your machine can handle. So always a good tool to have. Um, if you currently own a silhouette, the graph tech is an easy step up because the software matches. Um, if at some point you do plan to go to uh, print cut to create your own digital transfers, I don't recommend that out of the gate for most people because it's a pretty um, sizable investment. But if you're going to go there, that's the only way um, you may want to really take a hard look um, at that Roland machine because uh, Roland has the best uh, print cut in the market. Um, in my opinion, and it's nice to sort of grow in that roll and format at that point. So basically I'm trimming off my design. I'm going to take it over uh, to the, um, an area where I can weed it. Let's try this max heat press. We have a tool. Um, I mean, you can get it when you're just starting. If you have a, a nice budget, it'll make the weeding job easier. It's called the Stalls Easy Weeding Table. Basically, it warms the backing of the material to make peeling away like 50, 60% faster. 
Um, but if you're in a pinch and you have a heat press handy, all I'm going to do is warm that bottom platen. Um, that'll just get it warm. I can drop my material on it and then I can weed away. Um, that works on hot peel materials. So this product's called Fashion Film. It is a hot peel. So hopefully, try to get that so you can see it here. You can see we're just removing the outside edge from the material. If you've ever used Fashion Film, you know that's weeding easier than normal because we've warmed up the backing. That's why the weeding table is such a good investment if you're doing a lot of this. Pick out the centers of the design. Um, everything left in blue here is going to apply to my garment, so it's very important that you get this outside edge. While I'm removing that, Joe, do you want to pan over to the weeding table and give us a quick look? So this is our Stahl's Easy Weeding Table. It's basically a dedicated flat surface that is um, 20 inches by 36 inches, and it also inclines. So if you're doing a lot of weeding, um, operating at this incline is also going to save your back. You can lock your material into place. It is heated, so I can turn it into high, medium, or low on the setting, and I have a dedicated surface uh, to complete my weeding that's comfortable and that goes um, a lot faster. Yeah, so I see we're getting some comments. Can't believe how quiet that is. Yeah, the servo motors are tremendously quiet. I'm telling you, if you haven't experienced um, a cutter with a, with a servo motor or a professional grade cutter, it is such a step up um, from the other options that are out there. So I'm gonna load this t-shirt on just to finish off the job with your heat transfer films. Um, all of these products that I'm showing you, uh, will outlast the garment. So when you're starting a heat printing business, obviously you want quality. Um, heat transfers are very high quality if you have the right press and you invest in the right transfer technology. So I'm going to position that down into place, lock it down for the recommended time, temperature, and pressure. And this fashion film's great. It's going to have a nice uh, matte finish uh, and soft on the completed result. Also, I can do one cost effectively. That design, I use the 15 inches wide on the material and it's three inches tall. Um, so let's just say four by 15. Um, that's gonna cost me somewhere around 60 cents in material cost to do one. Add in the cost of the t-shirt and a few minutes of labor, you're making a lot of profit. If you're not making five, at least $5 in profit per piece, um, I think you need to sort of re-examine your pricing model. All right, what other questions do we have here? We do have a question. Uh, if you could explain what uh, product is used on the uh, Unitown High School Raider shirt that's in the background behind the Max Press. Yeah, and, and honestly, I think that's a good opportunity to, um, I'll take some more questions, but I'll sort of conclude with a tour of some of the things uh, you can do around the room here with heat printing. So let's start with uh, the one right behind the machine that we were asked about. Um, if we want to zoom in there, we have, uh, a, this is a tri-blend hoodie. So this was actually a project that was included in our Project Press It subscription box. It gives you a heat printing idea to your doorstep every month. Um, this one combines, I believe, Fashion Film or Premium Plus is the white, so just a heat transfer film with Glitter Flake. Uh, the gold and the blue are Glitter Flake colors and it's just another style of heat transfer film that can run through that same cutting process. Now, team business is huge here. Um, with a vinyl cutter or even ordering pre-cut numbers, you can do jerseys with your heat press. This is another reason a 16 by 20 heat press is important because you can get into big name and number combinations. Directly to the left of that is a two color white and gold glitter flake design uh, on a glitter hoodie from J America, so lots of different choices there. And then if we uh, work our way sort of um, over, we'll start to see some different items that can be made with your heat press. You can see a patent folio there that's sort of a leather or faux leather that can be decorated with the heat press and low temp heat transfer films. You can see um, the sort of kind of details that can be done. That's a hologram material um, with the design with the owl and the Hanna on that uh, raglan shirt. Um, left chest logos for businesses are extremely popular because many businesses you know, only have 50 or less employees, so it's a great 
Heat printing is a great technology for those types of jobs. Heat transfer foil is another uh, technology that with a vinyl cutter uh, can be accomplished. You can see sort of a great for back to school. Um, if we sort of scroll down, not only do we have this cross country, but let's take a look at this uh, lunchbox concept with a kid's name that's customized. Once again, leveraging the use of interchangeable platens. That's with our fashion film material in that lunchbox. Working our way over, we have a cross country shirt selling to uh, places within schools or teams is very important. That's on a performance fabric with our fashion film electric material. Left chest graphics, even monograms or higher end looks on this uh, dress from Wholesale Boutique. Uh, reflective heat transfer materials that are ANSI certified. This is a 3M reflective material on a high visibility shirt. So there are, you know, and there's just walls and walls and racks and racks of this kind of stuff here at Stalls TV. And um, you'll see if you subscribe to StallsTV.com, uh, we do videos, educational videos all the time to help you be successful in your heat printing business. So for those of you um, that need to head out now because we're a little bit over time, feel free to do so. But I'm going to stay on for another uh, 10 minutes or so and take all of the questions um, that you guys have. But if you're looking um, to get started heat pressing for profit, uh, definitely recommend get as much as you can in a heat press and then invest in a uh, vinyl cutter next. I believe with those two pieces of equipment, um, you'll be in a solid position uh, to be very profitable. Okay. Do you need to buy something from Stalls in order to use CADWorks Live Free? Also, does CADWorks operate on a Mac from Edgar? So CADWorks um, has uh, free access. Um, all you need to do is register on CADWorksLive.com. Don't necessarily have to be a Stalls customer uh, to gain access. The other thing is uh, on a Mac, it is web-based, so CADWorks will work on a Mac, but your cutter driver that you're sending to the cutter to, uh, you'll download and then you'll need to send to your cutter from your particular Mac compatible driver. Um, what I recommend for a starter, as much as you can afford, but um, I would recommend sort of a good balance of price and features um, is this auto clam. So start with the best heat press you can afford, a 16 by 20 Hotronics clam um, is a great startup. Um, if you're just getting started, if you don't have $1,500 in the budget and need to drop down a bit, the Stalls Max um, while you'll get less of a warranty, you won't get the digital pressure and you won't get the auto open. It's still a very high quality machine that will deliver accurate results. All right. Um, can you give a link for the monthly project uh, press it box? It is stalls TV backslash subscribe. Um, so that'll help you. Business related question. How do I categorize dec decorate apparel when setting up your business license? I only have the apparel manufacturer or screen printer as option. So um, I think screen printer would be a good categorization, but once again, I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to defer to your uh, business advisor or accountant to give you the best setup for your particular style of business um, that you're setting up. Any other questions coming in on GoToWebinar? I don't think we have anything on Facebook. I'll keep an eye on it. I want to thank everybody for attending this Stalls TV class, and I want to wish you uh, luck and much success in your new heat printing business. Thanks for watching.